Hi, I'm Griff Batch, and welcome to part three of my series on creating multiplayer cloud games in Scratch. With the rather tricky part two out of the way, we can now focus on getting more than one player in our multiplayer game. If you missed out in part one or two, then you'll want to go back and watch them, as we're going to pick right up where we left off. However, I have shared the finished scripts from my part two on my Griff Patch Tutor account, and you can find a link under the video. If it helps, feel free to remix that, and then off we go. Okay, let's just clean up our scripts from part two. I don't need these test blocks, but I'm going to remove the background costume. The P1X and P1Y cloud variables are also no longer needed. There, we're ready to begin. We will design our scripts to allow four players to join our project, and we'll use sprite cloning to do this, as it avoids having to manually create four copies of all the costumes and scripts that we will be designing. To prepare our project for this change, let's rename the player variable to my player number hash here instead of number. This variable is used to let the game know which player we are controlling. Now let's introduce some new variables. We already have the P1 cloud variable, but let's add cloud variables P2, 3, and 4, remembering to tick the cloud variable box. Then, for this sprite only, the new variable player hash or player number. Each player clone will have its own player number. And one more variable is needed. We're going to call this max players, all in uppercase, because this is for all sprites. OK, let's set max players to four. This is the maximum number of players we want to be able to join the game right now. We'll set this right after the green flag is clicked. And in case you are wondering, yes, we can make this cloud engine work for up to nine or ten players if needed. But right now, let's stick to four. I'm going to separate off the forever loop from the green flag stack. But please don't delete it. Just leave it down here as we'll need it later. Right, time to create our player's clones. Start by setting player hash to one. That's for our first player, player one. We want a repeat block to loop around for each player. So we'll use the max players variable. Within the loop, we create a clone of myself and then change player hash by one to progress on to the next player. Now a quick explanation here. When Scratch creates a clone, an exact copy of the sprite being cloned is created. In this case, the Scratch Cat with its costume position and all its variables. That will include the player hash variable, which we just set to one. So at this point, both the original sprite and the clone we have created have a player hash of one. But right after creating the clone, we immediately change the original sprite's player hash variable by one before continuing around the repeat loop. What this means is that the cloned sprite remains as player one, but the original sprite now becomes player two. The next clone will then be created as player two, and the original sprite will move on to become player three, and the loop continues. Okay, join the new script to the green flag stack. Now, to allow us to see this working, let's temporarily add a script that repositions the clones as they are created. Otherwise, they would all go on top of each other and we wouldn't be able to see them. When I start as a clone, go to random position. If we click the green flag now, we should see that the player's clones appear in random positions. Great, uh, except those who can count may notice that we have five players. Griff Patch, I'm not complaining, but I thought you said the maximum players were four. Yes, do not fear. We asked for four new clones. But don't forget, we already had one player sprite before we created those clones. And four plus one is five. So to remedy this, we simply take away one from the number of clones we create, like so. And there, now the green flag rewards us with four players. Excellent. But hold on, slow motion mode activated. Did you see how the players do not appear at once? Oh no, that's just not professional. This is because Scratch always assumes that loops are being used to create moving animations, and so slows down the scripts to allow us to see that animation, which is all very nice, but not here, please. We can remedy this with the handy run without screen refresh feature of custom blocks. Make a new custom block and name it setup players. Tick run without screen refresh and click OK. Move into the new custom block all the scripts that we don't want to show as an animation and then use the new setup players block in its place. Now, when the green flag is clicked, pow, all four players appear at once. Much better, that makes me happy. Cool, I'm going to delete the random positioning scripts now, as we've seen that the cloning works. 
To begin the game loops on all four player sprites, drag in a broadcast block. Click to create a new message and we'll name it begin. Drag out a when I receive block and select begin. Now bring back those scripts we separated off earlier and join it back up to the new begin receiver. This script will now begin running on each of the four player sprites. However, we still have a bit of work ahead because we only designed this script to control player one. We can quickly replace my player equals one with my player equals player number. Remember, my player is the number of the player I am controlling in the game, and player number is the number of this sprite. So these variables will only be equal when the current sprite is the player I am controlling. Next, depending on this sprite's player number, we need to set the right cloud variable, p1, p2, p3, or p4. Start by creating a new custom block and name it set cloud hash. Add the input player, another label, two, and an input named value. Tick run without screen refresh and OK. We're going to do this the easy way for now. So drag in an if else block and compare the input player hash to the number one. If it is the same, then we set cloud variable p1 to the input value. Now duplicate this up, only change it to check four and set player two, three, and four. If we like, we can remove the last if, as there's no player five at this time. Nice. Now we can use this in place of the set p1 block, like this. Just plug in the sprites, player hash, and encoded variables and dispose of the old set block. Hmm. Our scripts are getting a bit crowded. Let me just make a little space. OK, we still need to replace this begin decode of p1 variable to fetch the correct cloud variable for this player's sprite. Make a new custom block and name it variable equals cloud hash. Add an input named player and choose to run without screen refresh. OK, let's simply duplicate the set cloud block scripts as this is going to work similarly. But we change all the set blocks to be set value and then get the value from the corresponding cloud variable for each player, p1, 2, 3 and 4. Great. We now make use of this new custom block drag it in to just above the begin decode block here, and we'll feed it with the player hash variable. This will set value to the corresponding player's cloud variable. So replace the variable p1 here with the variable value. I'm feeling really good about where we are right now. Just a final touch, we'll update the say block to include each player's number as well as their name. We can do this with a couple of joins like so. All that remains is to add a way of choosing which player we're controlling when we play the game. Let's just continue to do it manually for now by pressing the number keys one to four. So duplicate the when key pressed hat block for players two, three, and four. And while we're at it, let's include a zero key to drop out of the game. That's by setting my player to zero. And that my friends is it. Are you ready to see what we have created? Let's go full screen. Ah, <laughs> looks like a scratcher. Uh, I'm Anne, or is it I'm Man, popular YouTuber has been here before me, right. I'm pressing the one key now, and there I am, Griff Patch Tutor has appeared. I'm pressing number two, and now I'm controlling cat number two. You'll notice that each time I've changed to be a new player, the previous player stops moving where I left it. Pressing three, yep, all looks good, and four, great. Now I can stop the project, all the clones will be deleted. Clones do not exist once the project is stopped. But if I click the green flag again, our scripts recreate the clones, read in the cloud data, and reposition the players exactly where they left off. Neat. But in reality, when a player leaves a game, you don't want them to hang around on the screen forever. So how do you tell a player has left the game? Well, you simply need to detect when they have stopped changing their player's cloud variable. To demonstrate this, we'll make the player fade out when their cloud data stops changing. Add a new variable named last value for this sprite only. We will use this to keep track of when the player's cloud variable has changed. Place an if else block here, just after the value equals cloud number custom block, and compare the variable named value with last value. Now we must be careful. This really caught me out before I understood what was going wrong. We must join value with a letter. I'll use the letter A. When a comparison is done on values made up of just digits, Scratch thinks it must be a number and attempts a numerical comparison. 
but this can go wrong. The scratch can't accurately represent long numbers. Technically, this is called a loss of precision. The result of this is that Scratch will say that the two numbers are the same, even if they are slightly different. This is not a problem when comparing long string values. So adding a letter fixes the problem. So when the current cloud value is the same as the previous value, we change the ghost effect by one, fading the player slowly away. But when the cloud variable has changed, we set the ghost effect to zero, bringing the player back into view. We also set the last value variable to reflect the change. Remember to also join it with the letter A as before. OK, it's green flag time. And look at this. We see all four cats appear. And then, because no one is changing the cloud variables, they slowly fade away. But if I press 1 to take control of the first player, then the change in the first player's cloud variables causes the ghost effect to be removed and it pops into view. So I am playing from the UK. But my friend, Crystal Keeper 7 has kindly connected from the US to help demonstrate this project in action. And you can see, as we switch players using the number keys, the unused players are fading away. And here we have three players at once. This is working excellently. Well, that's it for this video. But I hope you're as excited as me as to where we will be going next with this series. Things are really coming together. I'm especially looking forward to covering the subject of auto game joining and ways of getting smoother movements from the other cloud players. If you enjoyed watching this video, please like the video and subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching, and I hope you will join us again soon for part four. Bye for now.